This video series is not meant to be instructional. It is, however, an invitation to view my journey as I strive to build a log cabin on a budget. Working with sharp tools, felling trees, building log cabins, etc. is inherently dangerous work, which is why they should not be attempted without the proper training, safety precautions, and full knowledge of the associated risks. Enjoy. Sincerely, The Outsider. Although it seemed winter had passed in a blink, we kept ourselves busy during that time. Scouting. This one. Oh, nice. That's one for sure, and it's right off the path. The end of the right down there is what we were looking at. Yeah. Now there's several of them in here. Oh, the one in there, the way in there. Yeah, that far one. Harvesting. There she goes. and retrieving several poplar logs from various parts of the forest. We will eventually process the poplar logs into floorboards and roofing planks for the cabin. But now that it was spring, we were once again able to turn our attention back to the cabin itself. Things were looking good. The joists had stayed level during the spring thaw, which was a great relief to me. Now that I knew the joists didn't need any adjusting, I secured them in place using 10-inch Ardox nails. It was an exciting moment to load the first wall log onto the cabin base. Okay, now. Here. There. One sec. I decided to mill the first course of logs flat on the inside edge so that I can eventually place the floor flush against them. Okay. Okay. So we have to figure out here so we don't go as far. That's something to use as a guide this is where you actually want it. That's pretty good.
nice. The recommended height for keeping a cabin off the ground to prevent bugs and rot is at least 18 inches. Well, the low side of my cabin is 21 inches, while the high side is 36 inches. I figure the extra height will only add to the cabin's longevity. My goal has been to build something that not only I can enjoy, but so that the following generations can enjoy it as well. The first logs were easy enough to load by hand since we didn't have to lift them very high. However, we knew things were going to get increasingly harder as the cabin rose higher with each course. Some of the wall logs we would eventually need to hoist onto the cabin weighed at least 500 pounds apiece. I was glad that I could rely on the strength of my tractor to help us with those heavier ones. While I was gathering some logs, I came across a common creature, in my neck of the woods at least. Do you see it yet? It's there alright. You're looking at a ruffed grouse. As you can see, these birds are experts in the art of camouflage. Their feathers are designed to blend in perfectly with their surroundings. The clutch of grouse eggs is just another beautiful reminder that life has returned to the forest. Spring has officially arrived. And don't worry, the mother hen returned to her nest soon afterward. A month later, the eggs hatched and the chicks emerged safely into the world. I know this because I caught glimpses of them afterward. Ruffed grouse usually let their young fend for themselves once they leave the nest. I find it hard to imagine how something so small and fragile can survive in this environment. But yet, they do. Hopefully most of them anyway. I was quite glad the nest was near our build site. 
In a forest that is regularly patrolled by coyotes and coy wolves, the safest place the mother hen and chicks could be was near us. Although I was eager to continue working on the cabin, I still needed more logs, and now is the time to fell them. The cabin would just have to wait a little longer. The tractor always had some trouble starting for me, but it was getting worse. The problem was that the ring gear was damaged, which made it difficult for the starter gear to engage it. As well, the electrical system was beginning to fail and needed a thorough going over. I knew the problem needed to be fixed, but I hoped the tractor would hold on until the end of the summer.
My tractor was out of commission, and it couldn't have broken down at a worse time. It could be repaired, but repairs take time, especially out here. While I waited for the parts, the tractor sat, which meant the cabin did too. And just like that, the summer, the most important time for building, began to pass me by. Although I was incredibly disheartened by the temporary loss of my tractor, I was determined not to give up. Although I no longer had the tractor's help in moving the heavy logs, I figured there still had to be a way that I could continue my work without it. It was time to rethink things. When I constructed a previous log cabin, I built the walls up first and cut the windows and doors out afterward. I was thinking of doing the same thing with my current cabin. The benefit of this method is that I wouldn't have to worry about the placement of the windows and doors and ultimately the cabin layout until the walls were up. It also meant that I wouldn't need to worry about the window and door sizing up until the moment I was ready to put them in. However, this time, I decided it was far better to purchase the windows beforehand so that I would know their size and therefore could begin work on making the frames for them. This was obviously something that I could do without the tractor. Another added benefit of putting the frames in first and building the logs around them is that I could now work with shorter, more manageable sections of logs. My dad and I would now be able to muscle most of the logs on our own, further liberating us from our dependency upon the tractor. Although I didn't see it as a positive at the time, I believe the tractor breakdown was probably one of the best things that could have happened for the build. It forced me to find a better way. For that, I'm grateful.
we constructed the door frames first. For safety reasons, we decided to install two doors in the cabin, one in the front and the other in the back. As the summer drew to a close, we worked many days in the rain. If we had a free day to work on the cabin, we didn't want to waste it on account of not wanting to get wet. So we worked, despite the elements. I built all the frames with a slope on the bottom edge to allow rainwater to drain away from the cabin.
Sorry about there. That's good. <laughs> it felt good to have the first door frame installed. Another milestone achieved. Try to tilt it down a bit more. Okay. Is it, uh, I guess it goes this way. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I got that. Short level? Yeah, just watch this. Okay, I got it. Good. <clears throat> oh, that's good. Oh, yeah, the inside's probably better, right? Eh? Uh, yeah, probably. Okay, we can put it inside. That's a glow, right? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Come on. Okay, it's on. Okay. I think you must have been not. Oh, this is hard. You ready? Yep. Just watch it come suddenly. There. Now uh, we can go a little bit further. A little bit more and uh... Okay, wait. Okay. There we go. A little more? more? Yep. There, okay. Uh. Oh, this is easier to move. Okay, you 
might as well you want to put it up and just yeah. They were just up. this side if you want. Start doing it that way over on the other side. Okay. Uh, can you hand me the saw there? Now that the frames had been built, we couldn't wait any longer. We decided that with or without the tractor, we were going to start moving the logs onto the cabin base. For now, it was going to have to be without. Powered by Armstrong, as my dad would say, we muscled the logs as carefully as we could to avoid injury. Maybe a bit more and it'll stay, it'll just roll anyway, but how's that? I'm going to need to regroup. Okay, yeah, ready again? You just keep the, the okay, can we try again? Yeah. Oh, okay. One more. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Wait, one more. Yeah. 
Pissed up. Oh. Oh. All right. Yeah, the joist got pushed into my ankle. Okay, ready? Yep. pointy so it sticks sometimes. Well, we finally got the tractor fixed, and we put it to work right away. It was nice having our old two-ton friend back with us.
three out, but uh, okay, ready? Yeah. for the logs that were butted up against the frames, we placed a block underneath to keep them relatively level. We then put a nail into the end of each log through the frames. Not enough to worry about. We also there. nailed them That's down enough. at the corners. The summer gave way to autumn, and before we knew it, even the autumn began to relent. Even while the remaining colorful leaves still clung to the trees, short-lived signs of winter occasionally blanketed the ground. If I couldn't have the walls up in time before winter arrived, I at least wanted to have all the frames in place by then. Let me just put this. It's better that way. It might be a bit high there. Overall, it's sitting just exactly like it's supposed to. That's not bad. Not a lot. 
about to go home again. Like it should. Yeah, I have to call one of mine, but I don't know. This makes the taxi guy. At least it's too high. He's about to move in. No, we can. As challenging as things have been this summer, I'm happy with where we are. If our desire was strictly to have a log cabin, I would probably be quite disappointed with our progress. But my dad and I draw just as much satisfaction from the journey as we will from the end result. To us, the cabin is more than the sum of its parts. It's the manifestation of our journey, our legacy. That being said, we are more determined than ever to see this cabin through to completion. By next winter, our plan is to have the walls completed and at the very least, the roof structure in place. For John, we shall. Well, here we are, another episode complete. I am happy where we are, although I would have liked to have been a little further along in the process. But uh, going off of all of the setbacks that we had this summer, especially with the tractor breaking down, uh, I think this is the best we could have done, especially considering that we can only work on this log cabin on Saturdays. So it's not like we're out here 40 hours a week, 60 hours a week, uh, we are out here one day a week at the most and so I think we've made very good progress uh, Also considering that it does take some time to travel into this location and out of this location So part of the day is actually just spent traveling to and from the cabin site But what is really exciting to see is that we can now stand within the cabin walls or, or at least the beginnings of them We can look around and we can see the the windows and the doors where they are going to be and uh, it really gives substance to the cabin. And so now we can begin to imagine what the rooms are going to be like. The floor plan is beginning to take shape and so that is really great to see. If there's one thing I want you to understand from watching us work, it's that building this log cabin is truly a labor of love for us. Uh, we're not in it to do it quickly. We're in it to do it properly. Uh, we're in it for the journey. And so it is as much a labor of love as it is a love of labor. And I think that's what it comes down to. If you want to build your own log cabin, 
You have to love to get in there and do the work. I know I speak for both my dad and myself when I say that we love every step of the journey as far as building this cabin is concerned. From going out and selecting the proper trees, harvesting them, uh, to milling them on the sawmill, to hauling the rocks in with the tractor, uh, shaping the notches with our chainsaws. Uh, just we love every single aspect of it. And uh, so I know there's a lot of people out there that they really would love a log cabin of their own, but uh, they really don't want to do the work. Uh, that just doesn't interest them, which is fine. But uh, if you learn anything from this series, it's that if you want to build your own log cabin, it is a lot cheaper than it is to pay someone to build it for you, but you're gonna have to be willing to do the work. And I think the only way that you can survive a project like this is to love doing the work. Not just to see the work as a means to an end, but truly to see the work as the journey. Anyway, that's it for now. I appreciate all of you following along with us and watching our journey. Uh, we really do appreciate it, so thank you so much.